All right, let's talk about projectile motion. So, um, those of you who've done physics before, I guess you're kind of familiar with this. But the idea with projectile motion is that it's a motion which is constrained by a particular set of equations. Okay, that's um, kind of a mathematical perspective. From just like a <clears throat> intuitive understanding, right? Whenever you throw something up in the air, right? Um, we can model this with what kind of shape do you think is modeled when we um, are throwing this up there? Parabola, right? It vaguely looks like a parabola. And um, that's um, what these kind of projectile motion questions will look like. It'll look like you're launching something off uh, and we are creating this kind of parabolic shape. This guy over here, what's this guy over here? What does he look like? That is a, that is a, that is a big boy cannon. It's a uh, uh, term. Its term is uh, the Big Bertha, right? So if you've ever heard Big Bertha as like a term to represent something that's like massive or like a big unit or whatever, it actually originated from this. This is a cannon, I think made by the Germans either in the First or Second World War. Um, it's, it actually has a 42 centimeter caliber. So I didn't know what that meant until yesterday, but it means that the diameter is actually 42 centimeters long, right? Of the, like the, this part over here, right? <laughs> so like this is I only got a 30 cm real hill, so add 10 cm onto that, 12 cm. Um, oh, I'm starting to be called Big Bertha. <laughs> You're a bit disappointed, are you? I am actually. Okay. Oh, you might not be disappointed by this, Harry. Um, back when I was in high school, yeah. this is something that was um, kind of took up most of my time uh, in classes potentially. It's uh, old man. Oh yeah. Yeah right. <laughs> Angry Birds. Oh man, this came out in 2009, and um, Angry Birds. And then like its sequels, like all the random ones, like Angry Birds Space, Angry Birds Star Wars, like all those definitely sucked up a lot of time. Did you say you played this during classes? Oh, uh, no, of course not. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> do as I say, Harry, not as I do. Right. Okay, so <laughs> well, uh, this guy, right, when we think about launching a projectile like an Angry Bird, he's, uh, he goes off in a parabola kind of shape, right? Um, if you want a bit more... Confirmation of that, here we go, he's laid on the grid there and there's your kind of parabolic shape that's going on. The idea behind this topic of projectile motion is that we can use our mathematical equations to represent um, what's going on over here, right? So let's start with um, what are we kind of expected to do and what kind of constraints do we have here? Because we know that we do have constraints generally, right? So first thing is that um, gravity is assumed to be constant. Uh, yeah. Just like physics where air resistance doesn't exist. Um, yeah. So, funnily enough, so air resistance is not considered. Um, but if you do extension to mathematics, you will look at something called resisted motion which is uh, more accurate uh, modeling, I suppose, of this. Same thing with gravity, right? Gravity is um, not actually constant. I'm not sure if you're, does anyone know why gravity is not constant? Why it is. Why it isn't constant? Like in, in, like in our real life situations. Oh, like if you're doing that, it changes that a little, but it's not, doesn't matter. Yeah, do you know depending on how, how, like how it changes? Or? Well, it's because of the nature of gravity. <laughs> because of the nature of gravity. Closer you get to the core, the yep. stronger the gravity. Yeah, so it's something called the inverse square law relationship where, like, yeah, exactly right. Um, the closer you are to the core, the stronger the effect is. So, for example, a rocket ship which is leaving, right, as it's leaving um, the atmosphere, yeah, the um, effect of gravity is a lot weaker as it starts getting further out. Right? So, uh, again, that's something you'll look at in extension 2 mathematics. All right, so <clears throat> errors are not considered. Gravity is a constant. Um, the other thing is these equations, the equations can be... Cartesian or vectors. Now, what do I really mean by this? Well, a Cartesian equation is just all the stuff you've looked at before, like, you know, your little um, y equals to mx plus b, all those types of equations. <clears throat> That's kind of more the old course. So the newer course focuses more on the vectors component, and all the questions that you're going to look at, they're generally going to be um, in the vector kind of form, but just be aware that they can be written in a Cartesian form as well, okay? All right, what are we expected to do? Um, <clears throat> well, we're expected to answer things about uh, this situation that I just represented. Like, do you think of your angry bird? What kind of questions do we want to answer? Um, like, if you looked at that, qu that situation where he's being launched off, what questions do you think 
they might ask you about that. Um, range. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we all want to be careful of all the kind of terminology. What do you mean by range exactly? Range is like from where you go, where you shoot off. Yeah. Right, so, um, so how far you go, interestingly we call that the range of flight, um, because range we, we try, try and usually think about it as the y values, right, but this is actually, you know, your x values kind of going across, so the range of flight would be this guy here, right, there's some value for x. Um, the time of flight is actually something we are interested in as well. What's the time of flight? Well, how long it stays up in the air, right? What else are we interested in here? Max height. Max height, yeah. That's something that's interesting as well. So all these kind of attributes here, we've got uh, how long it, we are in the air for, what's our maximum height, and, sorry? Oh, yeah, good. That's, um, they generally tend to give you those, that information because you need it to actually answer the questions, like the initial launch velocity, the initial angle. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, or sometimes you might be asked to find various speeds at particular points in time, right? Because you're going to have a set of equations, some that describe the velocity, some that describe the displacement, and you can sub in values for, this is going to be in terms of t, by the way. Sorry? I can't hear. Velocity is power. <laughs> okay, sure. Velocity is power. <laughs> um, so, yeah, th these are the kind of main questions they can ask you, right? 